lot of the rules that we have to work around now are more designed with the DQP system, which is a system that they check the horses to make sure, check for soundness before pre-show soundness and after the show they go back through. But I think that has, the rules that they try to stick to, I think a lot of times they get backed into a corner to where they are more looking to catch somebody that's trying to cheat than actually helping the horse. And I think a lot of our rules have kind of turned into that and it's taken away from the craftsmanship that you can apply to these horses, you know, as opposed to say a gated horse or some of the Arabians that are still hand making their shoes. When you have to make a shoe to fit inside of a parameter, you know, a lot of hand making a shoe is where nail placement is everything, you know, and you can put your nails where you need to for confirmation wise to counter that confirmation. And on these horses, if you change your nail placement, it changes the dimensions of your steel. And that in turn makes your shoes illegal. So, you know, a lot of the things that we battle with or even the breakover on a shoe, all of our, all of the Tennessee walking horses, the bearing surface of the shoe has to be flat. And that eliminates a rocker toe or, you know, a lot of the things that'll help a horse. I think one of the first things that you do on a horse that has any leg problem, tendon problem, you know, any any therapeutic shoe, you typically the first thing you'll do is put a rocker toe shoe on. And that's not a tool that we're allowed to use just from our rules. And I think sometimes that hinders, as a farrier, that hinders your ability to help some of the horses. On an x-ray, a lot of these older packages, like this one I just picked up off a shelf, and we use a lot of these pads, it, it saves customers money. I mean, when you're changing horses, during show season, you know, you'll kind of find a setup that works for that horse and go with it, but like especially on younger horses, we change out our shoes quite a bit until you find a combination that works and a lot of times you'll use an old package like this one that'll fit a horse that might be the same setup that you need that was actually built you know this could be a two or three year old package that we just picked up off a shelf to see if it would work before we actually built one for the horse and during that time a lot of times this rubber has to be replaced and these it's put on with uh, coated eight nails just like you'd put up a fence or anything you know carpenter nail and these nails when they're worn the heads will break off so there's there's several nails that are broke off in this package and if you uh, weren't building a new foot there'd be a lot of nails in here that weren't really used to build the package they're just from an old worn out foot more than anything and uh, I think there was a misconception that that was done to add weight and actually all it is is saving time from having to break this down and pull nails out between each of these pads and uh that's just one of the things and that was something else that goes along with that is on a horse that is wearing a setup like this the where you would see all those extra nails you actually that is a toe weight so there's not really a need to put weight in the heel if there was we'd have a full shoe on and this is you can see it's cut out that's cut out so you can put lead in the heel. I mean, there's not a weight limit on these shoes anyway. So there's no reason, you know, to hide nails in the package. And you can see on the x-rays from the nail pad up, there's only usually six to eight nails in the horse's foot. The rest of that um, is just holding the package together. Like I said, old nails that were broken off in the pads from, the, from wear.